perfect. Thank you. If you really want enlightenment, then just lighten up. I've gone through a lot of growth and expansion over the last few days, and um, just wanted to share some of the highlights with you um, for those of you who might find it useful. Because obviously, for all of us who are going through our various lessons, there are others who are going through the same or similar, and we're on this lovely internet where we can share knowledge and insights and all of that good stuff, so, you know, may as well put that <laughs> to good use, right? Um, my best friend Katerina Edwards, um, she shared a post um, the other day which I, I find to be really insightful. Um, there's apparently um, this lady um, by the name of uh, Anais Nin, if I'm pronouncing her name right, um, someone from back in the 1930s or something, apparently some wise woman or some, <laughs> something like that. I've personally never heard of her, but I like the quote. We don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. Hence the title of this particular episode, and I've been having basically that sort of a lesson um, pretty much reflected to me a lot in, in, in my life lately, and um, you know, like, like most people, I'm the sort of person who... You know, through most of my life, you know, it hasn't exactly been the easiest in the world. I mean, society is neurotic and dysfunctional, and it, it teaches us how to be that, and, you know, so I think it's safe to say that most of us have dealt with bullying in some form, you know, through teachers or other students or what have you, and... There's a lot of us who start getting into this pattern of feeling as if we're not worth very much, as if we don't deserve very much, because we keep seeing these reflections in our reality back at us all the time, you know, shit and fan keep, um, keep rendezvousing. And so, you know, we have sayings like, you know, if I didn't have bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all, or, you know, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, and, uh, no pain, no gain, and so on and so forth. We have all these self-sabotaging, self-abuse, self-berating, pathological, sociopathical, frickin' weapons of mass destruction that we use against ourselves, and we're trained to use them against ourselves, and this becomes the norm, this becomes what we get used to. And once we get used to, Ever, used to something like that. Everything else just seems ridiculous. I mean, when someone is in that sort of a pattern, and a lot of us are there, some of us have, are no longer there, but have been there. And when we're in that pattern, the the idea of anything being easy, the idea of anything being joyful, the idea of, of good friends that we can trust, really trust, to care about us and we care about them, and good relationships, and, you know, just all this wonderful abundance that can be in life. You know, we see it as just this ridiculous, ludicrous, like, like pipe dream, you know. It's like someone starts talking about that, it's like, what kind of drugs are you on? You do realize that's not real, right? You know, gonna start talking about Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny next. And so, you know, we look at around at the world and we see all the crap in our own lives and we see the war on terror and, you know, and false flag events and genocides and disease and cancers and I mean we see all this crap I mean other than the crap that the mainstream media fills our heads with I mean we see we see all this crap and we think that this is all the world consists of it's not true I mean sure there is that stuff in there I'm not you know in denial or complacency there you know I mean there is all that stuff but you know you can't have a two-sided, or excuse me, you can't have a one-sided coin, it has to be two sides. Just like, you can't have a left without a right, an up without a down, a top without a bottom. You can't have a, a beautiful night sky filled with stars without the night sky, right? 
But the problem is, is we keep judging negative and dark as evil, and light and positive as good. Now, if we judge the negative prong on the car battery as being evil, and the positive prong on the car battery as being good, we'd never start the car. And when you look around during the day, and it's a beautiful day, and you think you're looking out seeing a, 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 a lit, bright, light, beautiful day, you're not actually seeing that. You're seeing just the right mixture of the light and dark that's compatible with your eyes, with your vision. If it was too dark, you'd be blind. If it was too bright, you'd burn your eyes out and you'd be blind. So it's that, just that right mixture, you know? And for always wanting to look for which ingredient to blame for the cake, when fault and blame is just an illusion, you know? I mean, is it the sugar's fault? Is it the flour's fault? You know? <laughs> and it's just interesting. And so, when some of us start to realize the neurotic ridiculousness of this, and we start to become more objective and kind of zoom out and start getting rid of these good and bad quote-unquote judgments, then we start thinking in concepts that start to seem ridiculous to a lot of other people. You know, like the idea that um, fertilizer isn't bad or evil. You can grow a garden with it. That fire isn't bad or evil. Sure, you know, if you touch it, you'll get burned, but there are ways to handle it safely that have very productive, you know, end results, like electricity, for example. But we get into these judgments of, of good and bad on things that are inherently neutral. And, you know, those manipulative sons of bitches who seek to control us, and I'm not pointing at a group. I'm pointing at just anybody who is of the mentality that seeks to control another. Judgments of something being absolutely good or absolutely bad is, uh, imagine if, for example, you were going to fight an, an enemy in a battle, right? Think of it like a, a war situation. You're going to fight an enemy in a battle. What if, hypothetically, you could convince your enemy that its weapons that it was going to use against you, let's say you could convince them into thinking that those weapons are evil, and that to even handle those weapons at all, is guaranteed that you're going to burn in hell for all eternity. Let's say hypothetically you were able to make the, your enemy who was going to attack you with these weapons somehow think that. Well, they'd drop their weapons and they'd make themselves defenseless, wouldn't they? And then you could just go in and shoot them all. Because they're thinking that to defend themselves is evil and that weapons are evil. Well, you know, that's the way we look at fire. That's the way we look at negative polarity of energy. That's the way we look at corporations. Oh, fight the Illuminati, fight the corporations, the, the war on drugs, the war on this, the war on that. These people over here are good. These people over here are bad. No. We're all human beings and we all have the right to our perspectives. It's neither good nor bad. We all have the right to our perspectives. And the trick is, is respecting that right within ourselves and the right others have to that. It's the lack of respect of that right because we've been so manipulated and society is so full of it and we are manipulated from little kids growing all the way up through school and all the way up into society to have these dysfunctional judgments and that we sabotage ourselves with them and that's why you know we're ruining the environment and you know crime keeps getting worse and so on so on everything about anything along those lines that you can say is because we're, we're placing such judgments of, of good and bad on everything you know the road to hell is paved with good intentions right that it's almost like the two sides are feeding off of each other it's a dichotomy bad needs good in order to exist good needs bad in order to exist and instead of allowing good and bad to coexist in in a, in a peaceful harmony we've pit them against each other and that's what creates all the crime, all the wars, all the genocide, all, all the environmental ruin. And when someone who's more objective points this out, usually people rage hard against that. Even the most well-intended, most loving people rage hard against that. 
because they've already got their minds made up. They've got all these little toddler judgments already all nice and preformed. So, almost like when you try to explain to a little kid, look, you need to understand the mechanics of the situation in order to be able to bring a solution to it. Or as Einstein liked to say, you can't solve a problem with the same thinking you know, that went into creating the problem. It has to be different thinking, otherwise you're just going to recreate the problem. But when you try to tell people, look, we just got to be more objective, zoom out, let go of all these silly judgments so that our decisions aren't unsobered. So we're not clouded by this drunken worry, drunken fear, drunken insanity drunken neurosis because you know it is like being hooked on a drug folks it really is and it has that sort of effect but when we can be brave enough to kind of go through the rehab you know it's like sometimes i talk like this and people say oh dave you're being so negative you know what you guys sound like to me <laughs> you guys sound sound like you're telling me oh dave continuing to take the heroin is good it's healthy it's wonderful but, you know, going into rehab and going into le rehab surrounded by people who love you and by people who care about you and people who want you to be, be healthy. Well, Dave, that's just evil. You shouldn't be talking that sort of negative, negative, evil stuff. Oh, my God, rehab? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh, taking the heroin is the only good, positive thing to do. And society demands we do it. And society knows better than we do. I'm looking at you people thinking you're nuts. And I know because I used to be one of you. <laughs> thinking that people like me were nuts. While you're sitting there looking at me thinking I'm nuts. And you know that's all good. That really is all good. The other night. When me and my best friend Katarina were having an interesting discussion about this sort of stuff. And about how we get so saturated into these belief systems that we're not worth anything, you know, we're unworthy, we're undeserving, and that anything other than suffering, hell, and misery is a pipe dream, it's not real. Um, we were talking about how there are those who, as they start to awaken into that more objective mind, they start to see you know, the other side of the coin, that it exists just as validly as that quote-unquote negative side of the coin. And with that acknowledgement, that starts to alter their thinking, which alters their choices. So their choices are a bit more sober than they used to be. And so the consequences of those sober choices, of course, is, you know, more abundance, more well-being, more happiness. They're starting to take a little bit of a different path. But part of their belief systems are still rooted in that old path, right? That old negative self-sabotaging dysfunction. And what they used to be able to do is they used to be able to use manipulation to put themselves in a situation through their choices where the consequences reflected back to them are as such that they can blame the external, they can blame others, they can blame themselves, one, the other, both, and that validates their belief system. That validates, okay, life is shit. It's always been shit. It'll always continue to be shit. This is just the way life is. And, and people feel comfortable in their familiarity, their comfort zones. They get freaked out about the idea of stepping outside of their comfort zones. So now they're starting to make more sober choices, more wise choices, things that are leaning more into the idea of their deservingness and, and their worthiness and things like that. And then when they see it, they start to freak out as if they just saw, like, the pink elephant flying by or something. That shouldn't exist, but there it is in you. So for a time, you know, it's, it's almost like drinking a can of Red Bull. They're on this high of, wow, I feel appreciated, I feel deserving, I feel worthy, I know that this is a true reality. And then they look at that other part of themselves that they've been used to, that's looking at that part going... That can't, that can't be! No, that's not true! That's impossible! Search your feelings, Luke. You know it to be true. <laughs> so it's like they go through one of those sorts of situations, and though their hand doesn't get cut off like Luke Skywalker, 
they do start to fall down in abyss, such as Luke Skywalker did in the movie, in that sense. So they look at all, all of this wonderful shit that's being tossed at them, and so they try to, to sabotage it. Because, you know, that's the method that they were always used to using in the past to get back that negative reflection to justify to themselves that it's their fault, the other person's fault, or both. But needless to say, life is a miserable cesspool. That's the reality. So then they try, they try to sabotage themselves, but because they've made so many good freaking choices within their shifting, adding resistance onto their well-being actually starts to increase their well-being. Ironically, it's like, it's like adding, adding fuel to a fire. The fire starts burning brighter, right? Because in the past, they didn't see all of this better side of life as a real reality, so they never stepped into that reality. So seeing as they never stepped into it, you know, there was nothing there really for them to, to rage against, right? That, that was just considered to be a pipe dream or a delusion. But now it's there. Now it's a reality. Now they got something tangible to try to screw with. But the problem is, is that things that are of those more wise choices and, and, and friendships that have been gained through those more wise choices are of a much higher integrity. So you got things like, like love and, and compassion and, and rationality and objectivity and all these things on the, you know, better side of the coin, so to speak, that, that start to kick in, that aren't so easily beaten down by the sabotage, you know? I mean, it's kind of, imagine a person that, that's used to living in, in a world of straw huts. So they know that they can take their battle axe and they can rip through and destroy those huts and tear them to the ground with no problem. But now they're in the world of brick houses and steel reinforced concrete and skyscrapers and all that. But they've still got that battle axe. So they're trying to use that battle axe to take down those structures and it's just not working. The damage they do to them is incredibly minor and they usually end up breaking their axe in the process of trying to, to do the nearly impossible. So they get all frustrated with themselves, they get all frustrated with their environment, they get all frustrated with everything. They put all this effort and energy into being frustrated, they repair their battle axe. They might even upgrade to a stronger battle axe. Maybe their their battle axe was um, iron with a, with a wooden handle. Maybe they upgrade to a purely aluminum or, or maybe even uh, titanium battle axe or an aluminum battle axe with a titanium blade or something you know whatever they upgrade to the stronger blade the stronger axe they're like all right motherfucker around you so then they try to destroy their abundance and all these good more solid structures with that and they get even more infuriated because they still can't do it Granted, they did a tiny little bit more damage to it than they did the last time, but they still come nowhere close to taking it down. In the meantime, they've overexerted themselves going crazy with this battle axe. They've, they've twisted their ankle. They, they've broken their, their wrist. They've completely worn out their voice from yelling and screaming and infuriated so much. They keep draining their energy. They keep getting physically sicker. Well, meanwhile, this structure that they're, they've they been trying to destroy just keeps getting better because the parts that they were able to damage, well, you know, opportunity, not burden, right? They needed some upgrades anyway. So this is just an opportunity for them to be upgraded. So they got upgraded. So now they are a newer, more improved version of what they once were, special thanks to the person with the battle axe. As Rahm Emanuel likes to say, never let a good crisis go to waste, right? So then this keeps infuriating the person with the battle axe more and more, and they keep trying to destroy everything. And every time, all it does is create upgrades and improvements to that which they've been trying to destroy. 
Well, simultaneously, they just keep getting more tired out, more worn out, less energy. They keep injuring themselves, and they keep getting increasingly frustrated with themselves and with others and with the world around them. The more they try to destroy these good things in their life, the more these good things grow and flourish because they're providing the opportunity for expansion, for upgrades, for evolution. You could only completely destroy and topple that, that which has a weak foundation, that which has a weak structure, that which lacks integrity. But when you've got something that's strong, that has integrity, like good friendships, good relationships, good wisdom, good intelligence, wise choices, when you have all of that, these things are just, they're much stronger than things that have been based on corruption, on greed, on selfishness, on, on tyranny, on all of that yucky stuff that's, you know, been running the world for a while. All the crime, all the shit, all the greed, and all of that. It's much stronger than all of that. Because all those things lack integrity, they lack love, they lack compassion, they, they lack anything truly genuine or truly real. They're, they're a facade, they're a fiction, they're, they're just, they're weak. And you've been tricked into thinking that they're strong, but they're not. The real strength comes in integrity, comes in tact, comes in compassion, comes in empathy. Those things that make us human. Because without those things, what are we? I mean, really. If we have no compassion, we have no love, we have no empathy, we have no integrity, then what are we? <laughs> are we human anymore? And if you decide to align with those things, with love, with integrity, with, with compassion, with empathy, with all of that, when you decide to align with those things, you're going to automatically become the underdog. You are officially completely not compatible with this world anymore. But I've got good news, and it has nothing whatsoever to do with switching your car insurance to GEICO. See, there's a lot of other people that are in the same boat that are just not compatible with society anymore. And there's, there's a lot of them right now that are rising up into their empowerment and their, and their sovereignty. A lot of them right now. And the internet's helping us to find each other. Isn't that cool? Because all throughout the past history of the world, people haven't had this whole instant communication and syndication thing for like minds to be able to find each other. So every once in a while, history would make note of people that were able to rise up and inspire others and do great things. You know, George Carlin, Bill Hicks, the Wright brothers, Einstein, Heisenberg, Max Planck. The list goes on and on. Alexander Graham Bell. I mean, Anybody in history that you look at and think, wow, they did some awesome shit. They were just so great, so awesome, so smart. They, they accomplished all of this. What they don't want you to know is that <laughs> they're just like you. No different than you, no different than anybody. They had their loves, their, their passions. They decided to be brave enough to go for them. And society raged hard against them, gave them no end of shit. You don't hear so much about that, but if you really do the research, you'll see how much resistance they came up against. But you know what? You want to know how a jet plane is able to fly? You see, those big-ass jets in its ass push it forward, which creates an equal amount of wind resistance coming at it from the front. These two forces want to hold this jet plane down like the world's most expensive fucking paperweight. But something interesting happens. You see, you got tail flaps and wing flaps. And what that does is all the resistance wind energy coming from the front, it channels it. It can push it up, it can push it down, it can push it from side to side. 
And this is what enables something that weighs many, many tons to be able to fly. <laughs> the resistance in your life is a positive opportunity. It's not evil. It's not a bad thing. And for a while there, just for a little while, you might be alone. When you start to get the courage to be yourself, instead of being a part of this dysfunctional suicide that this world's become, that the world wants you to conform to and be. When you have the balls to be yourself, you might be alone just for a short time, but if you have the courage to keep persisting, you'll be quickly noticed by like minds. And you will start to make some amazing friends. Friends that are worth having. Friends that are loyal. Friends that will always be there for you. Friends that even in your worst mood, no matter how ridiculous you might get in your lowest, deepest, darkest moment, that even after all is said and done, they still love you. They still care about you. They still think the world of you. They still think that you are deserving and worthy. And they are there for you no matter what. Those are the friends you start to make. And those friends know that if you're going to push them away, there's nothing that they can do about it. And all they can do really is respect your right to make your own choices and learn your own lessons. And they will continue to love you and appreciate you and still continue to see that you are deserving and worthy. Even if you refuse to see that in yourself. And that's what real friendship is. That's what being a human is. Compassion, empathy, integrity. Have we really forgotten that? If you have, then tell me. If that's not what being human is, then what is it? What's the point of life? I can't force anyone else to have compassion, to have empathy, to have integrity, to be sovereign, to be empowered. I can't do that. I can't force that on anyone else. And quite frankly, I have no right to. But I can choose that for myself. And I can be an example of what that is and be the change I want to create in the world and inspire others and usually piss most people off in the process, but it's all good. The way this world is, it's kind of to be expected. George Orwell once said, the farther a society drifts from truth, the more that society will hate all those who speak it. Well, I'm speaking some truth, and society's drifted farther from truth than ever before. So this ain't gonna go over well for most of you. But I hope that for some of you it inspires you. I hope some of you decide to continue to have the courage. The courage to be who you are. And not conform to this suicide that the world wants you to slit your throat with that fitting in to this dysfunctional shit. Because like any other shit, this is fertilizer, folks. We have the opportunity to grow a beautiful garden with flowers and everything else. Shit is fertilizer. So if you see things in terms of burden, well, fine. You're going to slit your throat. Nothing I can do about it. But if you see things in terms of opportunity, then you could take this fertilizer when shit and fan rendezvous. You can take this resistance like the jet plane. You can grow your garden. You can fly. We can make this world into a better place just by changing ourselves. By changing the environment that surrounds us by changing ourselves. So I hope this has inspired somebody out there. Some of you out there. Somewhere. Somehow. Some way. I guess that's all I have to say. Nothing fancy for this one. Just a logo screen. Just my voice. But that's all that's needed to be this time. I feel very liberated right now. 
And I have my friends to thank for that. I really do. That is all.